February 11th, 2023. Um, these people are nothing but drug dealers, prostitutes from the Gentleman's Club in Florida, and that agent that was in debt to him, the one from the Star County FBI Task Force, okay? Out of his area, my, my uh, husband David was, at the time, was dating his daughter Michelle, okay? All right, and I'll tell you what, that's why all this happened. He was in debt to those drug dealers and prostitutes. A gentleman's club from Florida is a gay strip club that they full surface men with drugs, alcohol, and sex and prostitute themselves, okay? Now, we're gonna put it this way. Um, that's why they're here. They've been grabbing kids. And where people have been making fun of me because they left me alive because I'm worth more alive than dead. I'm worth the witness protection program money where he put me in it. Um, and opened it and then stole the money for them. Okay? But he actually opened it around September 27th, 28th of 18. I called the FBI on the, around the 23rd, September 23rd, 18. Reported threats on my life to the 1-800 number. They called me back. Um, then I couldn't get out of bed for several days. And then we went up to... Uh, I went... And I was too afraid to leave after the guy threatened to knife me at Giant Eagle. Um, and the Pizza Hut Ravenna waitress got paid to uh, watch me. And realized the four attempts on my life was his church and him. And how, how was I so stupid? Not to think it, all those attempts, the four attempts for them, and that he was only cheating. It was like, why didn't you, dummy, why didn't you put this together? You know? And they have been date rape drugging me. And you don't process right afterwards. That's like my neighbor, Mike, had got roofied in a bar. He came up to me and said he got a problem. He didn't know how I got home. Instead of going in the house and laying down. He needed someone to talk to. He didn't understand what happened. How he got out of there. Just like the girl that I work with got roofied uh, too. And when she went out drinking with her friends and she don't remember being around a group of people. She don't remember leaving with them. And they raped her. She had somebody else's kid. She didn't know she had sex with. She woke up in a puddle of pee. You talk about messed up. You're sleepwalking for four to six hours. Well, I tried to tell that agent where Dave called me, where are you at buying something for dinner? And then he hangs up and he won't answer his phone and I get a flu shot. I sit down on the bench because I got dizzy. I hear the voice, I can't believe she's here. Um, it's the same one as I got her hood up over his head and I'm like, where is he? And I turn my car and he comes up behind me. I'd stab you right here now if it wasn't for that security guard and the pizza hut lady's like, well, you're just going to stab her and get her over with and I get away from them while they're arguing they're going to stick me. And I, I walk right up to the bank. I thought, they're going to have to do it in front of somebody. I want to open an account. Go right in front of somebody. And the pizza hut lady walks off from and comes right up to me. I get paid to watch her. The banker's yelling her, stay out of it. I said, no, I get paid to watch her. And he's like, lady, I mean it. Stay out of it. It won't be worth it in the end. And I look over and he walks off around me and she walks off too with him. And they, my phone instantly rings. I put him on hold. Okay. Then I, uh, he gets that account open and that guy, and that banker so mad, he's still smashing down stuff. And I'm like, da 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 da. How dare they? Da 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 da. And I'm froze. I don't know if they got a gun on me, if they got somebody else ready to knife me. You talk about being emotionally held hostage. I was afraid to move. And then I look up and they got my account open. There's a group of people leaving. I got in the middle of them. I freak out. I drive 20 miles down to the Walmart. There's an African-American lady there. Her, she spits in my face. Her and her white boyfriend harassing me. Uh, I go in to go to go in Walmart. Another guy with black hair, black eyes, and an eagle tattoo comes up. What a shame. And kept staring at me like a daddy and walk got away from him. And, and I got home and Dave's at the end of the driveway. My girlfriend's rich and powerful. Her family owns the police. She won't be able to withstand it. It's like, it's not a communist country. Nobody owns the police. So I took a day and I prayed, realizing by the grace of God, am I still alive? By the grace of God, am I still alive? Okay. 
and realizing it was them. And if I would dare forgive him this time again, for all where I used to forgive him for beating me just for a comment or beating me for doing something wrong, I could never forgive him again. And where I loved him with all my heart, my feelings were honest. He was using me for a punching bag. From when he got angry, he could just take his anger out. Okay? Where I loved my family and I loved him. That everything would be, not be together. We wouldn't have our family unit. We wouldn't have family get-togethers. And where I adored him. That's not love. That's control. And realizing everything, if I forgave him this time, he would kill me. It's got to this, and it's by the grace of God, am I still alive? It's the hardest thing picking up that phone call left behind. Okay? Because so if I didn't call, I'd die. So I called the 1 800 number because after they threatened to knife me on the 21st of 18, September 21st of 18, I waited for a day. So it was the 22nd or 23rd. I called the FBI. Well, I've been aging to call you back, and then I'm so drugged up where they were date rape drugging me, I couldn't get out of bed. And then on the third day, made myself get up. And then uh, I couldn't, what's wrong with me? I'm like dizzy, I'm sick. And I went out and started mowing along, get air in my face, thought about Sarah, where I told her that she had heard that they were going to have me killed. Went out and called her, of course, I'll witness for you, Karen. I'm scared for you. Went out and bought a card, put Will's number in it. Took it out to the mall on the way to church. Okay. And uh, her manager put it in the locker. We went up to Apostolic Church of Barberton, Paul Pamer got in Dave's face. My God, I had an FBI agent in my office. He's right there. I walk off, Dave comes in, let's go. He threatens my life and when I get home, okay, I run from him. The next morning, I have to call that agent back. I try to tell him what happened at Huntington Mac, all right, where I got the flu shot. I walked along the long bench and I sat down, okay? I heard him and Dada, is there a camera above you? I don't know. You either confess your line or I'll put you in jail. I said, what? Now your date rape drug, you're wearing off. Oh, I've got to think straight. Normal me would have hung up on him and reported him. But the drugged up me did what I was told. Um, he's like, I said, either say it or I'll put you in jail. I mean, I'll put you in jail. I'll arrest you. I'm like, what? He said, I said, say it or else. So I did. And he said, I'll come up and put you in jail. And he's screaming at me. I'm like, fine, whatever. Made me plead for my life opened up the count and uh, of the 5,000 month, the diplomatic community for life, all this, the money for life. But he tells someone, oh, you're crazy and no one can help you. He can't even ask me to stay quiet. He's not a sitting judge. He can't put a gag order on me. It's a freedom of speech. And he can't listen to me crazy. He's not a psychiatrist. See what I mean? He was bullying me. Well, last year I went to the can FBI, okay? And I go in, and it's a sealed building. They're out in the hallway talking about the case. Well, after the next day, after, okay, I called Will. This is where it's unique. Where I, where I called Will back, and he opened that case, and he was so mean to me on the phone. Next morning, I called Dixie. First thing in the morning, before the kids get up. I want you to stay out of this. She's like, Karen, they're threatening your life. I'm scared for you. I know that. I need to stay out of this. But Karen, I'm scared for it. I hear beep, beep. The uh, um, alarm, security alarm goes off. I'm like, what's that? And I'm crying over as the tears rolled up in bed. And I'm like, Dixie, no matter what's that. But Karen, they're threatening your life. I know they're threatening my life. You got to promise me you stay out of this. I hear, what's that? Dixie, stay out of this. But Karen, they're threatening your life. And I, I'm scared. I'm scared too. Men, that's not what's going on. Everybody out. Footsteps out the door. I get up and somebody broke in my house. Right. I call my sister. And she's like, Karen, I want to call the FBI on those churches for threatening your life. I said, um, Pam, it's crazy. One's already told on me. And there's a, a group of them have a copy of my phone and they're making fun of me. 
I'd have to get a prepaid phone and call you at work. It's that bad. She's like, what? I said, never mind, stay on this. I'm the girl, I got this. I went down in June of 21 to her house where I sat videos of them threatening my life to my sister Lori, okay? Trying to make it stop. So she say something to Linda, okay? That goes to that church. And she said, Lori asked me what this shit is about people threatening your life. I said, well, I called the FBI on Dave and the churches. When did you do that? I said, 18. Okay. Now, February of 22, February, March of 22, I went in the FBI building in camp. They're talking about the case out in the hallway. Nobody helped you because you called your sister. Because I dare told on one of them for breaking the law and telling you I'm me at Pamer. And that their groupies had a copy of my phone that I dare told on. It wasn't that, because he can't say, well, he bullied you into saying you were lying when you weren't. Because tampering with victims is a 20-year sentence. It's obstruction of justice and tampering with evidence. They can't even insinuate you're lying. It's badgering. It's Department of Justice 1729. You have to take some uh, victim, a witness, or informant statement, if you believe it or not, and follow through, or you go to jail. But they were using an excuse out in the hallway. You called your sister. That's why nobody helped you. They can't even ask you to stay quiet because of the freedom of speech. You can tell anybody you want. The only one that can ask you to stay quiet is a sitting judge. He's not a judge, he's just a higher officer. See what I mean? He doesn't have that kind of authority. The only thing you do is write up the witness protection program for a real judge to sign it. And the only thing they can sign by law is your diplomatic immunity for working this case for the rest of your life. So they can't try to pull a fast one. Your five thousand a month, your living expenses and your medical card. That's it. And your police home protective custody with your statement of knowing the threat of your life and the person that lives there too. That's it. This whole thing's been a scam. Uh, because even the regular cops, they can, even a Tusker or a sheriff, they can never, ever uh, tell anybody not to believe you and not to help you. You go to jail for that. It's a 20 year sentence. So they're taped before what they were talking about, according to the FBI building, is where I called my sister. And I dare told on one of them for telling on me. And those drug dealers having a copy of my phone. You know, if they would pull them who rented the duplex after 4490 John Thomas in Ravenna, there's a duplex after. There's an only day on one side and a group of men. Those are the ones that had a copy of my phone for it all that behind. They're the ones that were complaining when we moved in. We're going to have trouble with them living here. I thought, why? We should keep to herself because they're running drugs out of there. I gotta go.